the another synonym to gas gangrene is malignant edema uh, why do you feel that term has come Ma malignant edema so there is swelling clear cut swelling and that spreads and uh, any idea how it spreads it is because of the toxins and toxins gain entry into the blood that finally leads to septicemia and how malignancy is most of the times fatal similarly the gas gangrene if not controlled in time the cases are generally fatal that's why it's called as malignant edema so when a, uh, either a short note or a long question comes on gas gangrene you need to define gas gangrene enumerate the causative agents then what are different clinical types what is the pathogenesis and what is the lab diagnosis so let's study what is the definition of gas gangrene it is rapidly spreading okay that's why malignant edematous myonecrosis malignant edema the second term is edema and edematous myonecrosis what i mean by it is the muscles undergo necrosis occurring characteristically in association with severe wounds of extensive muscle mass so generally the wounds are severe and the muscles which are involved extensive muscle mass is involved the causative agents are clostridium perfringens is the most common cause then different species of clostridia like clostridium novi clostridium septicum clostridium histolyticum then other anaerobic organisms like anaerobic streptococci and also facultative anaerobes like e coli protease staphylococci you remember the slide which i showed you gram stained slide that also had in the background gram negative bacilli so the organisms like e coli protease they are also uh, uh, also associated with the case of gas gangrene now when it comes to clinical classification of the wound then maclinen had classified the wounds into three types one is simple wound contamination that occurs because of the anaerobic spores then there can be cellulitis uh, wherein just the fascia or skin and uh, the the area between the skin and fascia is involved but once it invades the fascia and goes into the muscle mass then obviously it becomes anaerobic myositis so here onwards we will study the pathogenesis just to recap what all things we did we studied a case and typically how there was no growth obtained on culture i showed you the picture and i asked you what are the clinical features of the wound then we went through different university questions short answers and long answer questions then we did the definition of gas gangrene or malignant edema then it is followed by the causative organisms followed by three different types clinical types of maclinen and then we are coming to pathogenesis what exactly happens why in staphylococcus we don't find such gas bleb foul smelling mal odorous discharge and why in these cases in clostridial infections only such things happen the central point is bacteria but before bacteria the typical wound of gas gangrene is always say a road traffic accident or a bullet injury like a warfare injury or it can be any deep injury where the superficial part of the wound kind of closes and the kind of gets good anaerobic environment for the special bacteria to survive now remember if there is a oxygen supply it is very difficult for clostridium to survive and then cause the infection so it has to be a deep seated injury for the gas gangrene to take place now generally when i say deep injury uh, say a road traffic accident or a warfare or a gunshot injury what happens is whatever is present on the road or in the surrounding area like say some soil along with some silica salt uh, calcium salt 
everything contaminates the wound something some penetrative kind of injury when it occurs along with the sharp object all these soil clay and the rest of the material they also enter inside the wound and this is the first part why any idea why this is important the basic cause of the infection lies in the um, soil or mud and that is spores of clostridium okay so the bacteria per se doesn't cause infection it is the contamination of the wound by the soil which has clostridial spores is the cause of infection so what happens the clostridium enters inside in the form of spore and because of the crushing of the tissues the blood vessels are kind of torn and there is local swelling and there is perfect anaerobic condi condition or anoxic condition for the organism to grow these spores are smart they have nutrition they have anaerobiosis so they start germinating and after germinating what you get is gram positive bacilli that is clostridium now the blood vessels which are crushed there is also seepage of blood from it so what we call it as extravasation of the blood and that extra blood coming in the site pushes the other capillaries also aside it causes pressure on the capillary bed and therefore the oxygen supply to the to that particular site is completely cut down now when the oxygen supply is cut down when there are bacteria which are growing obviously the bacteria start utilizing the glucose and the proteins in an anaerobic anaerobic way so what happens is the ph starts dropping down and along with the ph the eh electron potential that also starts dropping down and not just that what happens is bacteria start synthesizing different toxins out of which the most important the deadliest one is lecithinase what does lecithinase do it causes direct injury to the cell membrane okay so there is increased capillary permeability then there is alpha toxin which may lead to hemolytic anemias then collagenase hyaluronidase they kind of help in the spread of clostridium in the surrounding tissues along with that as a product of metabolism the clostridia start synthesizing gas and a lot of gas is produced locally and that gas also starts putting the pressure on the surrounding region slowly the gas collects near the wound and it tries to escape towards the skin and that is why that bleb that you saw in the figure was because of this gas not just that if you try to feel the wound try to palpate the wound you can feel a crepitus crepitus is feeling of the gas which moves underneath the skin or soft tissue now what happens is all these toxins they slowly gain entry into the blood and then the infection spreads laterally and systemically both ways the average incubation period if you see is around 10 to 48 hours now sometimes what happens is uh, imagine a site of warfare or imagine there is some deep injury to the uh, farmer healthcare is also far away and it, the access is difficult and what happens is by the time the person reaches the healthcare institute already a lot of precious time is lost and clostridia has gained a power spread and uh, give rise to septicemia the person will complain of increasing pain there would be tenderness there would be edema slowly the signs of toxemia also take over you can feel the gas that crepitus there would be profound toxemia which will lead to circulatory failure and finally the death of the patient 